Hello everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at the best tank sizes for keeping vampire crabs and we'll also be looking at the advantages and disadvantages of each of them and how to configure them best for vampire crabs. I'm also going to cover the size that I think is best if you're completely new to keeping vampire crabs. So to kick things off we're going to start with the 5 gallon tank or any tanks around the 5 gallon mark. This is the absolute minimum size you can keep vampire crabs in with the exception of sick crabs and baby crabs. I'll leave a couple of links in the description for videos dealing with those specific scenarios. However, we'll just jump straight into keeping crabs in a five gallon tank. So when I say five gallon tanks, I mean five gallons of horizontal space, not vertical space. So the biggest advantage of five gallon tanks is that they are cheap and that you can find space for them just about anywhere in your house. However, they are tricky to work in and an environment needs to be extremely detailed and complex to prevent your crabs from fighting and killing each other. So personally, I suggest five gallon tanks for people who've kept crabs before, who know quite a lot about their behavior and who are prepared to make a really detailed environment. The other thing with five gallon tanks is that it's also a lot more difficult to squeeze in a filter and a heater. While you don't necessarily need a filter and you can go filterless, you do need a little bit more experience to get this right. So I definitely suggest if you're new to start with a filtered tank. Generally as well with a five gallon tank, you're more likely going to need a heat mat because it's difficult to fit in an aquatic heater. That's just something else to consider. So the main reason for all this is that vampire crabs like to have their own territories. So you need to make sure you have an 80% land and 20% water split. This is crucial and this can be tricky in five gallon tanks. If you don't get this specific ratio right, it's going to be a total bloodbath. So again, that's why I suggest five gallon tanks for more advanced keepers. And if you do decide to keep a five gallon tank, even if you're really experienced, don't go more than three crabs. It's one male and two females. So the pros, five gallon tanks are cheap and they don't take up much space. So the cons, they're a lot harder to work in and you'll have a lot more problems with fighting if you don't set up the correct type of tank. Moving on to 10 gallon tanks, so we're stepping up to basically double the size. These are the next most common tanks in the hobby and any tank around the 10 gallon mark is fine. So 10 or 15, 10 to 12, whatever you want. So this is my ideal size for keeping vampire crabs and this is one I highly suggest you use if you're just starting out with vampire crabs. The main reason for this is that it's just a lot easier to work in and you have a lot more space to accommodate a filter and a heater and you've got a lot more real estate to create the exact environment you want for your crabs. The extra space will also help reduce fighting as the crabs can more easily evade each other and escape any conflicts they end up in. Again, I still suggest tanks with 10 gallons of horizontal space and not vertical space. If you're looking for build ideas in tanks about this size, something like the one here on the screen is a good idea. I'll leave a link in the description for that video as well. It's a little bit bigger than 10 gallons, but the basic concept works really well for a 10 gallon size tank. Again, I would still keep three crabs in this size tank. So one male and two female. You could keep six, but if you really want to do this properly, I suggest sticking with three. The main reason that they breed quite easily. So if you start with three crabs, you'll easily have a lot more before you know it. So you'll have a lot of extra space for the babies to grow up in without having to start a new tank as soon as you see babies. So the pros of having a 10 gallon tank, they're a lot easier to work in. You'll have a lot less problems with fighting and they're still pretty user friendly for space. So you don't need a lot of space in your house. So far, I haven't found any issues with a 10 gallon tank. That's one of the main reasons I say they're the best size to start out with. Moving on to bigger tanks, so 20 gallon tanks and above. And as always, bigger is almost always better, which is true, but it does have some disadvantages. 20 gallon tanks and bigger generally take up a lot more space and are generally more expensive, but it does allow your crabs to have a lot more space to move and you can be a little bit more liberal with the 80% land, 20% water rule. Again, this depends on population, but if you do plan on keeping a smaller population, say three to six crabs, a 20 gallon tank, you can have a lot more water if you want. So you could bump that up to 30% or 40% water. If you're gonna have a lot of crabs though, you're gonna need to stick to that ratio. The other thing I suggest, if you're going with a tank this big, starting with fewer crabs is a good idea because eventually you'll have more crabs breeding. So they'll have a lot of environment to grow up in and you won't have to worry so much about the cannibalistic nature of the crabs. For example, over the years I've kept 50 plus crabs in my 20 gallon long tank without any issues. And that is a lot of crabs for that amount of space. But those crabs were all born and raised in the tank and they started from two original adults. So it doesn't take long to get a lot of crabs. The main trick for this is to get stability and a very dense environment that has lots of plants, rocks, wood, debris, leaves and general environmental complexity. 
Having a fully bioactive tank stocked with springtails and isopods is also required to sustain a bioload of this many crabs. Without a really well established ecosystem, it's not going to work properly and it's not going to be ethical. The crabs just won't have a good life. So the pros of a tank this size, you've got plenty of space to create an environment, lots of room and reduced fighting. It's easy to place a heater, a pump, a waterfall, a filter, whatever you want to do with a 20 gallon tank or bigger, you've got a lot of space to work with. The cons, they're quite expensive and you're going to need a lot of space in your house or apartment to keep these tanks. Outside of that, there's not too many cons. So the next and most common tank type I get asked about is vertical style tanks. So I left these to last because they are a little tricky, but they're also some of the most interesting tank builds that I've seen. I personally haven't done one yet, but I do know a lot of people that keep them in vertical tanks and they are the most demanding for a number of reasons. So depending on the tank size, I highly suggest avoiding a vertical tank unless you know exactly what you're doing and you have had some terrarium paludarium building experience and a good understanding of vampire crabs. Vertical tanks require a lot of detailed work to create a usable vertical climbing space for your vampire crabs. While vampire crabs love to climb and will use all the vertical space that is available, the problem comes when they need to use the water section. So if you haven't crafted your environment perfectly, the bottom of the tank, which they'll need to pass through to get to the water, becomes a bit of a hostile zone. This basically means that any crabs living in the vertical space who need to venture to the water to molt or just want food or to hydrate, they have to pass through what is usually a dominant crab's area. So this isn't usually an issue when they're going down to the water, but if they've molted and they need to go back to their burrow or wherever they're living, they're going to be a really easy target and this is often where they get killed and eaten. While there are plenty of ways to reduce this from happening in vertical tanks, it usually comes with experience and behavior knowledge of vampire crabs, which is why I suggest avoiding a vertical tank until you have a good idea of what you're doing. It's not impossible, but knowledge really does help. So the pros of vertical tanks, they generally look awesome, they're one of the funnest tanks to build in, and they don't generally take up a big footprint in your house. The cons, they do require more work and planning to craft a perfect vertical space. They're usually a lot more expensive to purchase as well. A lot of people choose the Exoterra ones, which are quite expensive, but look great. And depending on how you set up your tank, you may have some problems with fighting. Again, that's avoidable, but something to be aware of. If you're completely new to vampire crabs, make sure you check out my vampire crab playlist. As always, it'll answer all of your questions, and if there is anything I've missed in this video or one of the other ones, just drop a comment below and I'll do my best to help. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video. Cheers, everyone.